So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we'll discuss one of the important testing interview question that is asked in the LTI Mindtree company. The question is, how would you handle the element not found exception? So many times in the interviews, you would get this kind of questions like element not found, still element reference exception. So you would get these questions for sure. If you are unable to answer these questions, then uh, it would be difficult for you to get shortlisted in an interview. So before we go to that question, I would like to also tell you about a package of uh, testing digital products that we have created. So this is a package which consists of 21 products. It covers interview questions as well as interview answers that are asked in the MNC based companies like TCS, um, Infosys, LTI, Mindtree, Capgemini, Cognizant, all the companies interview questions and answers have been consolidated here in this particular package itself so that you can use this package for your interview preparation and you can crack the interviews. Cracking the interviews is not difficult, but what is difficult is getting to the expectations of the interviewer. When they are asking you something, then many times, recently I came across one of the person, she was asked the question, how do you implement OOPS concepts in your framework? Can you explain? So she was not able to answer, right? So such kind of things are happening. So you can get all these products here. Everything you can get it here, whether it is Selenium with Java or Selenium with Python, everything you would get it here. Even Java interview questions and answers have been included on the public demand. So let's move towards the question. I'll be putting this link of the package in the description as well as in the comment section of the video so you can avail it. So how do you deal with the scenario when you are seeing element not form? Okay, so there is a checklist. So you should always cover your answer with this kind of pointers. Like we have a checklist for this. We have a kind of a best practices and standards. And in that we have also a checklist. Okay, if this particular thing happens, then what should be the solution? See, in a company, you might have five automation testers who are working. You also might have 15 automation testers here who are working. Now, it is very important that whenever any automation tester, any employee, any professional is facing an issue, and if he or she is getting the solution, then it should be documented. If you are documenting these things and you are putting it in the confluence or some kind of a common reference, then it becomes easier for any other person also to refer the same documentation and to move ahead with it. Otherwise, he will start with his own R&D and then he'll get the solution. So you can tell that we have a checklist for this, what to do when we see element not found. So you can check if the locator does it match exactly. Okay. If the element is in iframe or frame or not, if it is there, then you have to first switch to that. Okay. Then you can use explicit weights instead of thread dot sleep. You can use find elements for defensive checks. Okay. If the element is in shadow DOM or different window, you can use JavaScript executor or switch window as well. Okay. So those all things you can do. You can also take a screenshot whenever that particular scenario is happening in the suit. You can take a screenshot and then you can move on it. Okay. So this is a checklist and the possible solutions. Now it might happen for some people, second solution might work. For some people, fourth solution might work. For some people, fifth solution or third solution might work. But you have listed down the cat categories in the catalog and that becomes easier for the automation tester to identify. And if it is documented, then it is 50% solved because you know this is not the problem that you are facing for the first time. So you should answer in this panel in an interview that here's a checklist. We have already documented these kind of things or it is already shared by my lead and I'm following that particular checklist. It is good to be showcasing that you are arranged, you are properly planning your day as per the work that is allocated to you. Okay, why it occurs? So it might be the timing issues, right? If there are some AJAX calls happening and it is taking some time to load that particular page, so that also might happen. Okay, it might happen if the element is in iframe or in a different window. So as we were discussing, you can use find element versus find elements, those kind of things also you can do, right? Find elements would return an empty list to you. Okay, so that thing you can do. You can check the locator. If the locator is broken, if the locator has been changed, if there has been recently UI UX changes in the application and the website, then is that an issue? So that also you can get it checked. That also you can get it verified, okay? So that's the thing. Now, these are the 
common problems because of which you would get this element not found exception. Okay, fine. Now let's move towards the solution as well. So one of the common solution that uh, you can see across the companies which is being used is they will be using try catch. Okay, and they will be waiting for up to 10 seconds or this is also a time that you can keep configuring. Okay, if you want to keep 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you can keep it configurable in your properties file and you can change the parameter from there. Okay, you can wait for some time for that element to be present and visible. Once it is present, then you have to perform click on that. So what we have done here, we have used explicit wait. So wait dot until expected conditions dot visibility of element located. Which element you are trying to locate? This particular login locator. Okay. So this is how you can use the by login locator equal to by dot id of login. So you are waiting first for visibility of that element to be located. And then you are performing click on it. Okay. And you are putting it in try catch in the exception handling because tomorrow if some exception comes up, then it is handled and it has been taken care. So that's how you have to answer this kind of question. Okay, so you will apply weight, you will apply explicit weight, and it would be taken care. Now, the cross question also you might get, okay, which are the different solutions that you might have? So then these are the other solutions also that you can tell that uh, you can check for the frame. If it is frame or iframe, then you will first switch to that particular thing. So those kind of solutions you have to give. In an interview, you have to ensure that you speak with respect to different, different approach. You can tell this is my approach one, this is my approach two. That helps the interviewer that to know that yes, this particular person has actually worked in the real time automation testing project. Otherwise, what do they feel is maybe he has read something online and he or she has just come for the interview. So those kind of things are also happening. So it is very important that you read about these things and you answer in this manner that would help you a lot to get shortlisted in the interview. Right. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates and i'll be putting this uh, link of the package in the comment section as well as in the description of the video so you can avail it if you club the price of all the 21 products it would be exceeding for sure 1600 1700 as well but if you purchase it as a package you can get it at a discount limit. right so that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more. thanks